Daigo entered Street Fighter 4 at a crossroads, unsure if fighting games were his future. He left it as a legend, one of the most revered players in Street Fighter history and the history of the fighting game community at large. He was dominant across every one of Street Fighter 4's updates. In a growing and shifting fighting game landscape, no other player made more than two top eights at the Evolution Championship Series, Street Fighter's biggest event of the year, and the de facto World Championships prior to the creation of the Capcom Cup in 2013. Using Ryu and eventually the higher damaging evil Ryu, Daigo was the most consistent force in Street Fighter 4 as he won two Evos and made top 8 at every single Street Fighter 4 Evo held from 2009 through 2013. 2016 though signaled the start of a new era with the release of Street Fighter 5. An electric update to the series that included some key mechanical changes that severely hampered one of the tools that defined his Street Fighter 4 play, the Ume Shoryu. Namely, the removal of the focus system, which allowed Ryu to cancel his Shoryuken even on block, made the Ume Shoryu much more risky, removing the ability to cancel it on reaction to keep Ryu safe from punishment. The Ume Shoryu was critical to Daigo's success in Street Fighter 4. So unpredictable as to earn the label Psychic, the Ume Shoryu was both a safe and extremely powerful option that not only made opponents afraid to approach from the air, but made them doubt their grounded approaches as well. The damage to the life bar was big enough, but the mental damage was arguably bigger. Still, at Street Fighter V's release, Ryu still had plenty of sauce. He couldn't focus cancel like before, but Ryu still had invincibility on the start of a Shoryuken, allowing him to interrupt unsafe and shaky offense from the opponent, or to call out opponents when he knew they were too scared to block. It's just two frames, 1 30th of a second, where Ryu can't be hit at the startup of the Dragon Punch, but for somebody with the experience and trained reactions of Daigo Umahara, two frames can be an eternity. It was a move that commanded respect from the opponent and made Ryu's ground control with his Hadouken that much more threatening. Daigo piloted this version of Ryu to great success in Season 1. He won four Capcom Pro Tour events and placed top 8 11 times, a number eclipsed only by Haitani, another one of Japan's five gods of fighting games. But Ryu and his Dragon Punch found themselves on the chopping block come Season 2. Not only did the balance changes include a nerf to the Shoryuken's damage, but critically it included the removal of all of its invincibility at the startup of the medium and heavy versions. Now, if Daigo wanted to Ume Shoryu his way through an opponent's grab or attack, he would have to spend a meter, a, a limited resource that gave him a powered EX Dragon Punch, but in spots where players previously had to respect Daigo's ability to interrupt their offense at any given moment, uh, they now no longer had to respect his character as much. Daigo was desperate for any indication that Ryu would still be able to hang with Street Fighter V's Elite while still allowing Daigo to play the same style that had brought him fighting game success for two decades. In an interview with Kotaku in early 2017, Daigo said he wanted to make Ryu work. I'm optimistic Ryu will get better. Even if he doesn't get to a satisfactory level, if he shows even a hint of potential, which I believe he will, I will stay with Ryu. Daigo used Ryu at his first Capcom Pro Tour event of 2017, Final Round 20. He finished 33rd, tying his worst placement of the previous year in 2016. But that's not even a particularly fair comparison. The previous 33rd place finish was out of 5,107 entrants, the largest offline tournament Street Fighter has seen to that day. At final round 20, Daigo finished 33rd out of 468 players. He had seen enough. 
Those who watched Daigo stream in early 2017 would be treated to exhibition matches between the Beast and some of his top level friends. And occasionally they would catch him giggling about a perfect character. As he told Kotaku, Guile has it all. He possesses no weaknesses. Whether it's his V-Trigger, V-Skill, Ground Game, EX Gauge, or Wake Up Game, he is truly almighty right now. Sure, the input styles are different, but the game plans, you can see some resemblance. Guile doesn't have the Hurricane Kick, but he has the Fireball, and he has his own version of the uppercut, the Flash Kick. Critically, because Guile is a charge character instead of a motion character like Ryu, reacting and calling out moves with the flash kick can be done almost in an instant compared to inputting the full motion for Ryu's dragon punch. And while Guile also needs to use the limited but valuable meter resource to give the flash kick true invincibility just like Ryu's dragon punch, Daigo's ability to literally perform the flash kick in 1 60th of a second from a crouching position gave him the ability to turn from defense to offense instantly, catching people constantly by surprise. So long to the Ume Shoryu, welcome to the Ume flash kick. Nice. Ume There's flash kick! That's what we saw, that's how we got here. To understand why this was the perfect switch for Daigo's course correction, you have to understand why Daigo was great in the first place. Daigo was never a champion because he was the best in the world at execution or the world's most patient player. As he succinctly said to one of his students on a stream in 2020, I win because my reads are accurate. That's the only difference. Daigo could be as accurate as he wanted with the shell of Ryu he was left with in Season 2, but the reward wasn't there. It just wasn't a winning solution to continue trying to make him work when other characters could do so much that he used to be able to do in Season 1. In Guile was another character with the fireball uppercut combination he had used to control his opponents like a puppet master for years. And most importantly, when the read was accurate, Guile made you feel it. Guile has an extremely strong control over the offensive and defensive flow of a match, allowing Daigo to bait his opponents into doing exactly what he wanted them to do. It would have been easy to label the switch a mistake in the early days. Statistically, Daigo's first performances with Guile were the worst of his entire Street Fighter V career. After finishing outside of the top 16 at just one CPT event in 2016, EVO, Daigo finished 17th, 13th, and 17th in his first three CPT events with Guile. These lackluster performances left Daigo well outside of the qualification range for the Capcom Cup. As Red Bull Kumite approached, Daigo had just 85 points, well behind the 185 necessary for top 30, the cut line for a Capcom Cup. Daigo's absence at the Super Bowl of Street Fighter would be unthinkable. It hadn't occurred since the first one back in 2013, a closer look at Daigo's losses, though, would reveal that the seeds of success had been planted. His losses came against some of the titans of Street Fighter, Dogura, Fujimura, and Punk, who combined to account for four of his eight losses at his first four events. His first Guile set against Punk, a player who would go on to win 10 tournaments in 2017, including the Capcom Pro Tour North American Finals, revealed the razor's edge separating Daigo's Guile from Street Fighter's upper echelon. Neutral would go fine, the rounds would be close, and Daigo's life bar would then suddenly get deleted by one of Street Fighter V's trademark explosive combos, and all of a sudden his tournament run would be over. The same could be said for Daigo's loss to Dogura, another Street Fighter Titan, at Australia's Street Fighter Major Battle Arena Melbourne. Again and again, the match came down to low health, even if Daigo had only himself to blame for the end of the match's final round. Oh! He killed himself with the Daigo killed himself! Too. And Daigo, a rare sign of emotion for Daigo. Look at the
Let's take a look at some numbers behind these two sets. Punk and Dogoro were both big time players in Street Fighter V in 2017. Punk topped the Capcom Pro Tour leaderboard running away in first place, finishing with nearly 150% of the point total of second place, which was Tokido. Dogoro would finish seventh in tour points, thanks in large part to wins at Canada Cup 2017 and Taiwan Fighter Major. Here's how much life was left on Punk and Dogura's life bars in their winning rounds against Daigo in these sets. That's a lot of close rounds. <laughs> only one, the last one against Punk, was a runaway. That was the only one of those nine rounds in which Daigo's opponent had more than half their life bar left. Only two of the others saw Daigo's opponent with more than a third of their life bar left and four of the nine saw the opponent with less than 20% health left on the table, easily one hit away from victory. On average, in his losses to two of Street Fighter V's top 10 players over the Capcom Pro Tour season, Daigo left them with just 29% of their life bar in his losses. The building blocks were there, but Daigo needed to find a way to close out these rounds faster and make Street Fighter V's capability for huge damage work in his favor. One way to do that is with the stun mechanic, which plays a much more prominent role in Street Fighter V than its predecessor. Stun, or the dizzy state, has been a part of the Street Fighter series since Street Fighter II. A means of rewarding players for keeping up the pressure, putting the opponent into stun grants a free combo. Especially with meter in reserve, this can easily result in combos that melt half a life bar, if not more. In Street Fighter V, as with Street Fighter III, the stun bar is visible below the health bar. It fills up as damage is taken, drains when the fighter isn't getting hit, and remains steady while the fighter is blocking. When it fills up, though, that's a stun and a free combo for the opponent. Stun has plenty of counterplay. Beyond the simple yet effective running away, the V-reversal mechanic actively drains a small chunk off of the stun meter upon activation, and if it lands on the opponent, it allows the fighter to create space, reset to neutral, and let the remaining stun bar drain. But overall, Street Fighter V significantly reduced the amount of universal defensive options all characters had access to compared to Street Fighter IV, putting the onus on the defensive player to find ways out of pressure before they find themselves dizzy in the corner. Guile has a unique advantage when it comes to stun though. The simplest counterplay to a high stun bar, backing off, doesn't work quite as well against him. Guile's Sonic Boom projectile has the lowest total frames of any projectile in Street Fighter V. Compare his Sonic Boom to Ryu's Hadouken. You can barely detect it visually after they each throw just one. But after two, you can definitely see it. And after the third, the difference is clear. Guile's booms are much better at locking a fighter in place, and that just extends the amount of time they're forced to fear that stun bar. Combined with great attacks that move Guile forward and create pressure, as Guile gets closer and as a throw or an overhead or a single flash kick threatens the stun and the round, it creates a position where one read can win the game, and that's a position in which Daigo has excelled for decades. Red Bull Kumite isn't part of the Capcom Pro Tour season, but it was a prime opportunity for Daigo to get high-level bracket sets for his guile on a huge stage. One of the premier events on the fighting game calendar, Red Bull Kumite pits 16 of the world's best players against each other. At Paris, France's 2017 edition, the competition included top Japanese players like Tokido and Bonchan, as well as European stars like Luffy and Infectious. Daigo fell to losers immediately thanks to XYZZY, one of the many strong players from South Korea's fighting game scene. It looked like it was going to be more of the same disappointment for Daigo. Loser's bracket, though, 
would turn out to be a different story. After squeaking past RB from Taiwan, Daigo would play some of the most explosive Street Fighter of his life across his next three sets and against some of the game's strongest players at that, Tokido, Phenom, and Bonchan. It took all of 1 minute and 10 seconds into the second round of the match for Daigo to land his first stun on Tokido. Off guard. Generally you'd expect guard oh. the to be zoning. This is all offense, all rush down, all forward momentum. The Daigo oh my is God. harvesting. That would have been a stun. It's there now. And his Daigo awakened the ascendant. Oh, oh. he whips it again. Daigo would lose just one game across these three matches, game two against Bonchan, as he rolled through three players who had given him major issues in the past. In the process, he racked up a ridiculous seven stuns in a 10 minute span. Only one other player at Red Bull Kumite 2017 even amassed seven stuns across the entirety of the tournament. That was Gachakun, the event's eventual runner up, and he needed over 45 minutes of gameplay to do it. In sum, Kumite saw just under four hours of gameplay, 225 minutes to be exact. Take out the Daigo sets and you have 184 minutes, just a hair over three hours. In those three hours of Street Fighter, the non-Daigo players produced 34 stuns for an average of one stun just about every 5.4 minutes. That means Daigo did in 10 minutes what would have taken the field well over half an hour on average, 37.8 minutes to be exact. Daigo would exit at 4th in the end, falling 3-1 to one to Great Britain's Infectious. But in just one day, Daigo had rattled off 3 wins to rival any his guile had picked up before. Perhaps more importantly, Daigo showed you had to be afraid of his guile. His punishes at early events left commentators less than impressed with his guile's technical skill. Now. He was eating half of your life bar off of one wrong move. Kumite was great, but it didn't mean anything for Daigo's chase for a Capcom Cup qualification spot. Just over a month later, Daigo proved there was some life in his guile by finishing 17th at EVO, a two round improvement over his 33rd place finish from 2016 that included revenge over Dogra for the infamous mirror incident. Still, Daigo was only about 60% of the way to where he needed to be. He was going to need some wins and fast. Recall how close he was earlier in the season against the likes of Punk and Dogra. Less than a third of a life bar was separating Daigo from the game's best. Now, with his punish game tightened up, Daigo was ready to put himself on the right end of those close rounds. Let's take a look at some clutch moments from Daigo's 2017 run to the Capcom Cup. To succeed in high level Street Fighter V, you absolutely have to make the most out of your resources, the V gauge and the super meter. With both gauges full, most characters become walking nukes, ready to wipe half a life bar off of one hit confirm. These were the combos the likes of Punk kept deleting Daigo with in the early parts of the season. To make his ability to read opponents work for him, Daigo had to be able to do the same with Guile, who gained some vicious and agonizingly long combos off of his V-Trigger, the Sonic Blade, which linked directly into Guile's super, the Sonic Hurricane. Daigo faced a viciously difficult opponent in top 32 at Fight Club NRW number 8. Problem X. A titan of the European FGC, Problem X is just one of 12 players to qualify for all four Capcom Cups for Street Fighter V. Problem X wields a terrifying M. Bison, a character that truly tests defense. Between severe combo damage, plus frames of plenty, and some truly dizzying left-right mix-ups, Bison is one of the scariest characters in the corner. In Game 3, facing match point, Problem X had Daigo right where he wanted him, down to his last hit and in the corner. 
Daigo successfully blocked three hits, tacked the throw, V reversal through a multi-hit special, and finally flash kicked to escape the pressure. After catching Problem X holding back twice, he read a jump after a sonic boom with a fierce punch to take the set, a critical one given its position in the bracket. If he lost, Daigo would have had to win nine sets in a row to win the tournament. Instead, he only needed to win four in a row to take the tournament through winner's side, dropping just four more games along the way. The Fight Club NRW win was enough to get Daigo above the cut line for Capcom Cup, but he was far from safe with nearly half the season to go. A 33rd place at Japan Cup left Daigo needing at least one more solid result to feel safe. A win at a premier level tournament like Esports Festival Hong Kong at the end of August would certainly lock up a spot. Daigo cruised the grand final on winner's side, but Gachakun arrived from losers with vengeance in his heart as he 3 0'd Daigo with a quickness, including three stuns. In a last hit situation in round three of game one of the reset bracket, Daigo desperately needed to stop the momentum of the set and find a way out of the corner. This comeback by the numbers, 31 seconds, 26 projectiles, four whiffed knees for positioning and one blocked sweep. Daigo put the pressure on Gachakun to get through the wall and Gachakun couldn't do it. The momentum was more than nullified. It was completely reversed as Daigo would go on to 3-0 Gachakun in the set to win the tournament. Daigo's first opponent at Capcom Cup 2017 was Brolinho out of Brazil, an Akali player whom Daigo 3-0'd with Ryu in 2016. In game two, Daigo saw himself with a full game and round lead, but round two went down to the wire, and indeed, there was the walking nuke. Brolinho popped his V-trigger with 70 seconds left on the clock and a full stick of butter. Daigo had just under half of his life bar left, but could not feel safe here. Luckily, he also had a full critical art meter, and his V-trigger was about to come on deck. Daigo then took a couple of hits, ate a throw, but in order to win this game in a round, he would have to make his next opening count. Brolinho made some supreme adaptations and took the next two rounds to force Daigo's first set of the tournament to a decisive game five. With both players on match point in the third round, it was going to come down to who could make the next clutch read. Daigo is very much oh. paying attention to the jump. You can see that. Oh, oh this is the knee. And somehow, stone-faced Daigo stands up without having broken a sweat. It's easy to take for granted that a player like Daigo, who was an all-time great in Street Fighter IV and so many titles before it, would always be one of the best. But continued success in fighting games is so far from guaranteed. There were 21 different players who managed to finish top eight in Capcom Cup across Street Fighter IV's history. Of the 28 players to make a Street Fighter V Capcom Cup top eight, just six of them, 21.4%, belong to that group of legacy Street Fighter 4 finalists. Whether because of altered mechanics and new games, rising young talent, or just the simple fact that life happens and priorities change, sustained success in the fighting game genre is rare for a reason. I consider myself a slow learner. Someone who doesn't learn fighting games extremely fast, Daigo told the Daily Dot in 2016 as he was still finding his way in the new title. Reaching the Daigo level, the beast himself says, does not happen instantaneously, especially when it comes with an adjustment to a new character. As badly as Daigo may have wanted to make it work with Ryu, to do so with any sort of success would have forced him to stop making the reads that make Daigo Daigo, in the end, he has found a way to make Daigo the person shine through Guile the character.
Daigo remains a force on the Capcom Pro Tour. He qualified for Capcom Cup in 2018 and 2019 and would have qualified for Capcom 2021 had the continued pandemic not forced its cancellation. But the key to it all has been finding his perfect character in Guile, a character that allows him to play his game and take advantage of the reads he has been successfully making for decades. This level of adaptation, this ability to remake himself without losing what made him great in the first place is what makes Daigo Umehara not just a great fighting game player, but the greatest of all time.